February is not only a month to celebrate love, but also a time to bring awareness to the number one killer, heart disease. Dr. Thad Tullison with Tyler Cardiovascular Consultants uh, here to chat about that. Also with East Texas Medical Center Cardiovascular Institute. Nice to have Thanks you here. Thanks so much for Thank coming. Thank you. Heart disease still the number one killer in this country. It doesn't discriminate. It gets everybody, does it? No, that's correct. It's still, like you said, it remains the number one killer of both men and women in the United States. And statistics on East Texans bear that out, that it's exactly the same for us as it is across the rest of the country. And also age is sometimes not even a factor, huh? What are we see it, yeah, we see it a lot more commonly probably in younger individuals now than in past mm -hmm. times, probably related to a combination of the fact that there's less exercise that goes on these days because most of us have sedentary jobs and the fact that, that the rate of obesity has increased significantly over the past two decades. What are some guidelines to getting people up and moving and, and you know exercising more with this world we're living in? The American Heart Association recommends about 30 minutes of exercise most days of the week. Research has also shown that as little as 15 to 20 to 30 minutes of exercise, a minimum of four days a week actually has significant cardiovascular or heart benefits. So it's a good place to start in terms of of patients. Uh, you also have to think about obviously if you watch your diet and you do exercise you got to think about family history too right Doc? It is you know the, clearly heart disease runs more commonly in some families than it does in others mm -hmm. but I th the important thing to, to remember is that even if you have a strong family history of heart disease there are a lot of things that you can do to prevent the onset of heart disease in yourself or even if you already have heart disease to prevent the progression of it you know things like blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, smoking, and as you mentioned, exercise, all of these things are what we term modifiable risk factors, meaning that we have some control over those and that you can negate the, the effects of genetics in large part if we sort of attend to those risk factors. Now, even though you can control some of those things, stress sometimes plays a big role that people seem to not control. How do you tell them to cope with that? Uh, th that's a good point. You know, we've, we've kind of thought for a long time that, that stress was related to heart disease and so forth, but studies over the last couple of decades have actually shown that, that stress plays a big role in it. You know, you always hear of the type A personalities, the, the irritable people, the perfectionists. I'm sure that doesn't run in y'all's y'all's <laughs> field at all. But um, probably those people when they're studied, they have higher levels of, of hormones such as adrenaline and stuff that are, that are chronically in their system that lead to high blood pressure, that lead to increased heart rates, that, that lead to the onset and the incidence of heart disease in them. What about, let's, let, let's, let, let's turn the camera around to the medical community. Do you know a lot of doctors who also have, pro who obviously, I, can, I would imagine being a physician has a certain level of stress as well. It does. I mean, I, I tell my patients every day, I, I'm no different than they mm -hmm. are. Um, I'm 47, and when I was 25, you don't worry about these things. Oh, but, no. but all of us now are in the age range where we develop heart disease, and so the things that apply to them apply to me equally, whether it's reducing your level of stress, whether it's trying to eat healthy, whether it's trying to exercise. I, I kid with my patients that you should never go to a fat cardiologist because that's someone who clearly doesn't believe what they're telling you. Doesn't so practice what they preach. Yeah, what applies to them applies equally to us. And speaking of practicing what you preach, um, know your numbers is a big quota you guys refer to, right? Yeah, that's that's an important point because some of the risk factors that, that are so prevalent in heart disease, specifically high blood pressure and high cholesterol, don't have any symptoms associated with them, especially in their early phases. And so the only way to know if you're at risk because of your blood pressure because of your cholesterol is to have your numbers checked and that means having your blood pressure checked that means knowing what your cholesterol level is so that if they are high we can institute diet lifestyle modifications things to lower those into a normal range and in many patients that's that's adequate we can bring it down without having to use medical therapy or medicines to do that the earlier you know what your numbers are obviously the, the better chance that you can prevent the onset of heart disease like anything